Go ahead, take that over the dock. Plenty of time. Look, I don't like this. That's a savage, Jacko. This is for the old man, not for you. You know what I'd like, Ted? A nice cold beer. Oh, for Pete's sake. Get a nice cold glass of beer. Why don't you go and set it up for oh, me, Jack? Eh? Just get out of it, will you, Ted? Oh, that's sunny, Jim. Ridge and you'll see it. What there is to see. First time in Aiden, Sarge. Yeah. Hot, eh? Very. It gets hotter. <laughs> There is, and you have to pick ox blood. Well, it's my girl. See, she likes it. Is that all she likes? Yeah. I tell you that soon enough. All right, come on and tell us how long. Thirty-seven days. In every one of them, you'll be slapping on that rotten ox blood. Why don't you get a pound of liver for each foot and have done with it? Oh, you're only jealous. <laughs> jealous of you, a lousy pit pony. Do me a favor. Yeah. Here's the fact. I just smoked my last. And little Willie's writing to his mum again. Oh, aye, he done that yesterday. Oh, so he did. Oh, this one'll be to the forces' favourites. For mum and dad and all at number 38, not forgetting Uncle Cyril. A little bit of the Warsaw Concerto for your little boy stuck out here in the desert. And that right, Billy boy? I said, and that well, right? Why don't you, you know? Why don't I what? Trying to write a letter. Oh, I thought you were going to offer me a fag. You know where to get him. Hey, have a look, eh? One fag, that's all I want. One little fag. Perfect, Tuff. Oh, God bless you, Donald. Don't thank me. Thank Billy, boy. Over a car, sure, Tuff. Oh, in a minute, I might. See you down in the new day, boy. Hey, one good right hand repack pack it up, all right? That's it, Tuff. So why don't you lay one on him? Because that's exactly what he wants, Billy. Well, okay, give it to him. Teach him a lesson. Now, is that the way you think about it, Taff? We have a fight. He knocks me senseless. What does he learn? Oh, he learn right enough if you thumped him. No, all he do is find some other mug to take it out on. Oh, you're always better, is it? I think so. You're wrong, boy. You're wrong. Here, sir. Sergeant Mann, isn't it? Yes, sir. Sorry to keep you a bit of a flap on. Sit down, will you? I've, uh, I've just got to find, uh... Ah, your first time in Aden? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, not much of an introduction, I'm afraid. Dead and alive, hold this part of the woods. Ah, oh, used to be an old fortress, you know. Not like HQ, that's very pleasant. Very pleasant indeed. Yes, you'd like that. 
Still, someone's got to clean up the mess these idiots keep making us with. Eric, sir. it's 108 square inches. Tell Captain Dorney, will you? You better have that filed. Yes, sir. Right. Now I'm with you. Oh, what have you got there? Mail? Oh, yes, sir. They asked me ah, to bring it. I better take that. You haven't seen Sergeant Rolfe yet, I suppose? No, sir. Ah. Of course, this is the kind of thing they love. The local policemen? No, not only the local police, all of them. They think all they've got to do is to scream and the British government just forks out compensation. Blasted wogs. You had any dealings with them before? No, sir. You can't trust them, you know. You think I'm prejudiced? Well, no, sir, I... Take don't. a tip from me, Sergeant. Forget all this equality, Lark. All very well if you're sitting in your behind in England reading the Sunday newspapers, but come out here and try and deal with them and you'll find it's very different. Very different indeed. Well, I haven't really thought about it, sir. No, I just... Uh, just trying to put you in the picture. I've got nearly 130 men on this godforsaken unit. Most of them have been here nearly a year. I don't think you'll find their opinions will vary all that much. I'm told to get a lot of sabotage out here, sir. It never stops. <coughs> it's what we're here for, of course. Trying to keep the lines of communication open through those blasted hills. If it isn't a bridge, it's a road they're having a go at. I'd like to uh, speak to the local police as soon as possible, sir. Huh? Oh, fair enough. It's a tidy run from here, you know. I'll get them on the blur. You don't want to show too much willing, though. Get me the order room, will you? I should talk to Sergeant Rolfe first, if I were you. Ten, Jack, Green, King, X. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not careful. It's all right for a son. Where you been then, George? You know what he had me do? Clean that flaming truck. Oh, get away. Honest, 120 in the flaming shade, and I'm tarting up a truck. You'll know next time, won't you? When he says jump, you jump. Well, that wog didn't do the job good enough. Instead of his arm, he should have cut his rotten head off. They got a red cap here about it. What? Right. Shall I go? Yeah. What do you say? No, don't mean nothing to it. Oh, I could tell him a thing or two. Yeah, you do that, Tuff. Aye, I would at all. If I know Jacko, they'll probably give him a medal. Mm, stack. Did you hear that, Billy boy? Your favorite sergeant's in trouble. Uh -huh. I thought you'd be upset. Can you? Well, you're his favorite little soldier boy, aren't you? You say so? You crawl around him enough. Come on, you. Hey, crawl around Jacko. Hey, do you hear that, Taff? Me, crawl around Jacko. Do you know what I'm doing? I'm biding my time. Because one of these days, I'm going to have him. That's funny, do you? I think it's funny enough. I wouldn't stand for that, now, boy. Oh, belt up, big mouth. You ask for trouble, don't you, mate? No. No, you wouldn't see it. You lie there asking for it, but you're too scared to come and get it. I'm not frightened, Baker. At least I'm not frightened of you. I'm only frightened of what I could do to you. <laughs> Very clever. I'm not trying to be clever. I'm just trying to explain. I'm dying to take a poke at you, Billy boy. Looks like you get right under my skin. You're not trying to make a fool out of me, don't you? Oh, why don't you listen? No, no you're trying very good at sidestepping, too. But one of these days, I'm going to have you and all. Of course, you all lot move about quite a bit, though, don't you? Yeah, we do our share. Yeah. Yeah, I had an oppo in your mob. Got done up in Cyprus. Walks into a cafe after a bloke, gets a bullet right where it hurts most. That's the, uh... Oh, yeah. Bad? No, no, no. Half a dozen stitches and a locked jaw jab. That's about it. I was more annoyed than anything. Annoyed? Yeah, that he caught me. Oh, you didn't see he had a knife? You never do. Tell me what happened. There's not much to tell. Oh, tell me anyway. Where from? Where you like. 
Well, was it um, about 11 o'clock? Yeah. I was walking back from the mess. I've been having a drink with a bloke called Ted Bailey. As I hear this noise over by the ration stores, sure enough, this comedian's force in the window. I go for him, cop this, that's about it. You uh, pass him over to the adjutant? Yeah, that's right, yeah. And the first thing next morning, they whipped him off the local police. Oh, you know that bit. And much of a fight, wasn't it? Well, me and him. On one arm cropped. Uh, they're tough, skinny, but tough. Must have been a job getting him over to the guard room. Oh, I managed. What do you do, lay him out? You got it. Apparently he's in hospital. Mm, so they tell me. He says you worked him over, you know, systematically. He would, wouldn't he? And that there were two of you. Uh, just me. Right, well, if you'll uh, write out a statement of that effect, sign it, I'll collect it later. All right. That's it, is it? Yeah, more or less. And back to the beer gardens, eh? Well, I've seen the local place. Local place? And she's not in wogs. Don't tell me you're going to take any notice of that lot. I've got to speak to that. Well, they'll twist anything. If there's any twisting being done, I'll find out. Well, I would have thought, you know. What? My word was good enough. I haven't said it, is it? What's the point of speaking to them, then? Because they made the complaint. Oh, look, mate, you're not in Germany now, you know. Things are a bit different over here. Oh, now, look, let's not bring that up. This is my first time in Aden, and I'm suitably ashamed, all right? All right, but you want to get your knees brown before you start telling me what to do. Telling you what to do? OK, come in all this official stuff. You know the book as well as anyone. Oh, look, for God's sake, use your loaf. I'll catch a stinking Arab, nicking our grub, our grub, and you carry you on... You didn't like work him over, did you? And what if I did? It's the only language I did understand. Did you or not? No. And that's all we need to remember, both of us. Now, if you write out that statement. Right. in the army trying to tell me about rules and regulations. What's he say? Nobody says it's what he is. I've had enough of his calm before. He'll chase this one right through you, watch. What's it they call it? Integrity? Integrity, my aunt Fanny. He wants to spend a couple of weeks out here and see what happens to his rules and regulations. Mm. He's pushing it through, then? No, not yet. I just hope that wog over does it, that's all. Don't know why they can't mind their own flaming business. Ah, don't worry. Worried? <laughs> it's worried. I'm not worried, mate. I've got a job to do. A job it's taken me 20 years to learn. Look, I had these up before he lost the cradle marks. he better not forget it. <laughs> well, he's coming here tomorrow morning. It'll save your journey. Who's that, sir? Superintendent Jacob. Local police. Jacob? Yes. Faze Ben Jacob. <laughs> Splendid, isn't it? Well, I need an interpreter. Oh, good Lord, no. He went to, uh... To an English prep school. That's why he's so dangerous. Sit down. What's he like, sir? Jacobo. Oh, no, sorry, Robert. I meant uh, Sergeant Rob. Oh, well, uh, you've seen him yourself. What do you think? Tough, a bit resentful. I oh. am. Looks like me. Official them, if you like. Oh, it's all very well. I'll tell you what, he always yes, sits. I know, sir. He made it clear enough. Well, he's tough. He takes an occasional shortcut, and he's as steady as a rock. Sort of person you're glad to have on, his, on your side, especially in a place like this. How does he get on with the men, sir? Well, agreed he's a hard man, Sergeant. He's had trouble before. So I believe. Recruits complaining about his behavior. <sighs> recruits, Sergeant, recruits. There's always one who complains. Well, there's more than one in this case. Look, you know as well as I do, this sort of thing's bound to happen. A tough old sweat like Rolf is asked to take the edges off a bunch of young men. Boys, most of them. Civilians in uniform. In 12 weeks, he's got to turn them into soldiers. You don't do that with a pat on the head, you know. Nevertheless, it's on his sheet. Well, you're not going to hold that against him. No, sir, but this uh, Superintendent Yakov might. I take it that you think this charge is so much bull, sir. I'll tell you what I think, Sergeant. I think your coming here is a complete waste of time. Oh, I know you get these complaints and you've got to investigate them. Any help you want from me, you'll get. But I've got my own opinion about Rolf and what he does. But he gets things done, and that's what we're here for. No one in their right mind is going to put him all the, over the wall for a thing like that. Are they, Sergeant? As you say, sir, I've got my job to do. Right, he'll be here tomorrow morning, then. Oh, 
And where are the others? I don't know. Pretty good. Everything nice and clean, eh, Russell? That's it. Nice, clean, ready to kill. Well, you'll know what it's all about, lad, if you ever have to use one of these things. Well, I've not got a fair deal what it's all about now. Well, you think so, eh? You think a bit of practice for the sucker straw puts you in the picture, do you? Well, I hope for your sake, lad, you never have to use this. Have you? Oh, yes, yes, I've used one, all right. Oh, you had no choice, of course. No. Kill or be killed. Well, that's the way it is, isn't it? Is it? Do you know why we're here in Aiden? We're here because we've got a job to do, lad. Okay, what job? I oh, don't get clever, sir. No, I'm just asking you a question, that's all. All right, I'll tell you. We've lost Cyprus, we've lost Malta, we've lost Egypt. We're not going to lose this one. We will. Give it a couple of years and a conference table in London and what's happening now won't have meant a damn. Uh, perhaps not. Anyway, like I said, that's the way it is. I'm a soldier, not a politician. I do what I'm told. That gives him one of these things, eh? Well, you'll find out one day, lad, that that is the only way. I've got draw. Yeah, yeah come on. Got for you. Yes, I. Right. Oh, yeah. got a key. There ain't that many good wogs lately. What's the limit? What's six months I can't afford? I've got the only very, very I want a full kit inspection. You've got ten minutes. I want to find one thing wrong, that's all. Just one thing, and a lot of you for the high jump. And that includes you, Baker. Anybody ever thought of filling him in for good? For sure. Leaving us, Major. Soon. Now the prospect's no doubt pleasing. I shan't be sorry. You'd like to see a lot of us clear out, of course. Oh, now you're always welcome as friends of our country, but as an occupying force, hardly. If we did clear out and leave you to it, you'd find you'd taken on more than you bargained for, and you know it. Oh, I know we desire independence. And until certain elements are weeded out, and this can only happen with your help, we must be patient. You're a good diplomat, Faze. Thank you. Trouble with you chaps is you don't know when you're well off. Come in. Ah, uh, uh, Superintendent Jacob. Uh, this is uh, the Sergeant Mann. How do you do, Sergeant? Sir. Well, I'll clear out and leave you to it. Uh, let me know if you want anything, will you? An unpleasant business, Sergeant. Very. Uh, Dasuki, that's the man involved. He's still in hospital. So I understand. The beating he took was uh, quite savage. Well, Sergeant Ralph was much luckier. He got away with six stitches and a knife wound. Uh, as I say, uh, an unpleasant business. Now, where shall we start? Well, perhaps you'd like to read a copy of the sergeant's statement. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Right, Miss Evans. Just waiting for them cylinders to be filled. Everything else ready? Well? Yes, Sergeant. Right, the rest of you get over to the armory. Hey, boss! Sir? Come here. I thought I'd tell you to clean out this truck. I did, Sarge. Now look at those wheels. They used it since get then, Sarge. Get them clean. Well, Sarge, I cleaned it. That's what I said. You've got ten minutes. It's all of you. You know, go on, Dunny. It's all part of the system, sir. You'll know that by now. Unless the man was trying to break in the ration stores. That was never denied. 
What we're concerned with is the treatment received afterwards. According to him. I suggest you look at his injuries, Sergeant. The man had a knife which was prepared to use and did. He could hardly expect to be treated with kid gloves. But he could expect a somewhat different treatment from a member of Her Majesty's Armed Forces. You see, there are several questions which so far remain unanswered. For example? For example, Desuki says he was attacked by two men. Where is the other and why did he not come forward? Then again, if the struggle was so violent and we know that Sergeant Rob was injured and presumably at a disadvantage, why did he not call for help? Why should Rob lie? Ah. Now, let us examine the Sergeant's point of view. Now, he finds the man stealing. There is a struggle and he is injured. Well, naturally, he's angry. So he and whoever is with him take it into their own hands to teach the man a lesson. A rough justice sergeant, perhaps believing that the punishment he would receive from us would not suffice. Afterwards, their anger cools, they realize they must take and invent a story. It's one man's word against another. Ah, yes. But one of the men is an Arab. Well, I don't see what difference that makes. Then you must forgive me, sergeant, because you are either very naive or else a liar. I venture to suggest that it wasn't simply a starving Arab your sergeant was attacking. It was a way of life. Why else was his anger so fierce? You are here to protect us, and we steal from you. What kind of people are we? Oh, now, you might occasionally sleep with our women, but it's the nearest you come to acknowledging that we are in any way human. I'm sorry, but in this case, I'm inclined to believe Sergeant Ralph. Oh, naturally. However, there's a further complication. Your sergeant assumed that Desuki was knocked unconscious immediately. Fortunately, this is not the case. He remembers being dragged to a hut very near the Russian stores. He has managed to describe the contents of this hut. He was thrown onto a bed, up to which time he did in fact become unconscious. It was then that he was beaten by one man, the other having disappeared. You must agree that this throws a somewhat more unpleasant light on the situation? If it's true. I'm sure I can rely on you to find out. I will. You say you can describe the hut? Ah, yes. He remembers it was very bare, a bed, a chair, and the wardrobe, the mirror of which was broken, that is all. You will look into this? Yes. Thank you, Sergeant. And now, I must go. I shall arrange an interview with Dusuki any time you like, although I must warn you that he is still critically ill. Goodbye, Sergeant. See what I mean? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, he's not a bad sort, really. But I wouldn't trust him. I expect he managed to get in some propaganda. Oh, yes, sir, but then so did you. I'd like to speak to Sergeant Rolfe again. Oh, no, you can't. He's somewhere up there. They blew another bridge last night. We'll be away long. Depends how much damage they've done. At least 24 hours, I should say. Let's have it. This cigarette. They were psychology, softening up the tubes before they go into action. No, oh, yes, yes, very good, Russell. Of course, you're the bright one, aren't you? Oh, very. Oh, yes, yes, of course, you're bright, lad. I bet enough of your kind. Of course, what the clever ones a mile away. You mean the ones who stop and think what they're doing? Not paid to think, lad. Oh, well, there's no other reason why, eh, Sarge? You think that's bad, dear Russell? Well, I'll give you a little tip, lad. You forget all your clever little thoughts and save them up till you can sit down in Trafalgar Square and the rest of the no-alls. Not in the army now, you do things my way, all right? Doesn't matter what you think of me, but when I tell you to do something, you do it. And sooner or later, you do it without thinking, and that's very good. Because one day something will happen, and you won't have time to think. You do what I tell you, and you'll be glad of it. Like a troop of performing monkeys? Yes, that's right. Well, you're not in the circus, you're out here. And there's no one clapping. See, if a monkey doesn't jump, he doesn't get his lump of sugar, does he? And if you don't jump, you might find your red stuck on the end of a pole, lad. You do it my way. You'll get home to mother. Yes, Sergeant. 
Yeah. Smith? No, thanks. Step by me. It's your man. You are now. You're a bad check, aren't you? What's the turn? That's how everybody keeps telling me. Yeah, it will. You know him, then? Hmm, a place this size, I couldn't help it. No, what I meant was... Ah, sure. Uh, you on that, Jacko? Well, as anyone, I suppose. You were with him uh, that night? With him? Uh, here, in the mess. Oh, yeah. Was he drinking? Well, a couple of beers, that's all. Ah. Why? I just wondered. Well, he wasn't sloshed, if that's what you mean. Uh, he's not much of a drinker, Jacko. That, uh hut near the ration stores. Huh? I just took a walk round there. There's a hut. Empty, just a bed. Yeah, the ration clerk used to keep there. I noticed it isn't locked. Isn't it? No. Well, no point. I suppose not. Why? Just a thought. Five minutes break, Sergeant. Where do you think you are? Do you realise they may be watching us right this very minute? If they can blow this bridge, they can put a bullet through your shoulder blades as easy as that. What do you think, along, lad? A picnic? No, not a picnic, Sarge. For nine hours work in the sun, that's no flaming picnic. Say that again, Baker. You say that again, lad, and your people and pick the ground. Yes, they're right, Miss. They're getting clever. Hey, what do you reckon, then, Sarge? Well, it doesn't look as though it's going to get jumped tonight, does it? I move. Give me HQ. Sarge. Get the chair on. Right. Normal watch till sunup. Take her first watch. You forget to let her down. Did they going to try anything, then, Sarge? Well, like I keep telling you, Sonny Jim, you never know. The old man's tightened up a bit since we had that spot of trouble. Hey, tell me that mob's still pretty dicky. Yeah. <laughs> I was in a bit of a fellow done one up once before. Not here, HQ. Straight fight, no messing. Next thing you know, this mob's brother gets my mate in an alley and puts a knife right in his kidneys, right in. Nearly bought it and all. Of course, they get this wog, and he goes on about honouring the family's name a wog. It makes you laugh, doesn't it?
Who's got the fags, then? <clears throat> oh, wait a minute here. Here you are. You was Jack who then? Well, don't tell me you're worried. He took last watch. Well, I wasn't with him then. Should have been here shouting and hollering by now. Oh, well. Here we go. Oh, I don't want to join the army. Oh, are you so cheerful about? 34 days, boy. First day of a new month, too. Oh, you make me puke. Oh, puke away, boy. Oh, I'm laughing. You better get out of here. Well, what's up? It's Jekyll. Morning. I'd like to see uh, Superintendent Yakov again, sir, if I could have some transport. There's no point. Well, I'm afraid that story might be true, so I had a look at that hut last Sergeant night. Sergeant Rolfe is dead. They found him this morning. He fell off the bridge. His body's been taken to the mortuary at HQ. Sergeant Mann. Here, let me buy you a beer. No, I'm all right. I'm sorry. Sit down. Sit down. <clears throat> I'm uh, sorry about Rolf. Sorry? Why should you be sorry? It didn't mean a lot to you. <laughs> I think it's funny. 20 years in a mob, old jacker. 20 years soldier and he gets it falling off a bridge. Don't you think that's funny? You didn't like him, did you? Oh, well, why should you? No one liked him. No one knew him. He won that sort of bloke. So I'll tell you why I liked him. He reminded me of my old man. It's another laugh, isn't it? He's a cop out, my old man. Not all the skinny half pints you get around these days. One of the old school. Built like a brick wall. Slow, a bit dim even. But when he walked down the street, you knew he was there, and you thought twice about being clever. His beat was his kingdom, and he ruled it with this. Yeah, like I say, he was a big fella. Not very bright. But by God, they respected him. They understood his language, you see. Oh, we've come a long way since then, haven't we? One word from a copper and some smart addict ups with a complaint. Well, tell me it's better that way. Yeah, it looks like it. So it was with Jacko. A man they didn't like. A man they complained about. A man a civvy thinks is a bit of a giggle. A professional soldier. Well, it's still a bit dirty if you haven't got pips on your shoulders. But when they start shouting Dunkirk, Korea, Malaya, Cyprus, Jacko was in there hoping to sort them out, because that was Jacko was for. I like the Jackos that start the wars. I just finish them off. You want to see me, sir? Yes. The four men are back. I told them to get a meal and wait for you in their village. I've spoken to Superintendent Yakub, sir. I explained the situation, but I get the feeling you'll press on with the charge. I'm not surprised. It's the British Army they wanted on the hook, not just Sergeant Rolfe. I thought you'd be laughing. I don't see anything funny. You wanted him out of the way, didn't you? Well, now he's gone. Well, no one said they wanted him dead. Huh? You think about it. Two days ago, you were talking about cutting his head off. That's different. Is it? And what about you, Billy boy? Oh, no, I'm sorry, I forgot. You don't agree with anything like that, do you? Turn the other cheek and all that. Love. Look, cut it out, Don! The bloke's dead. That I couldn't be happier. Because I'm not like you, Lutzi. When I say something, I mean it. I said he'd get his up in pot and he has. Me? I'm laughing. Morning. 
I'm Sergeant Mann. You know why I'm here. Poor old Jacko. I'll have to take a statement from each of you. Excuse me, Sergeant. Yes? I've already made out the statement. Well, I knew you'd want one, so I got on with it, Mike. I think you'll find it's got all you want. We've all signed it. All? Well, we agreed that I'd act as sort of spokesman. You are? Uh, Baker 629. All right, Baker, you tell me what happened. Well, as soon as we get out there, he sets us out to work, Mike. But it's a longer job than he thought, so when it's dark, we jack it in. Mind you, if he had his way, he'd have had us work in all night. But uh, I'll put him straight, Mike. You thought you'd done enough. Well, three hours travelling and nine hours grafting, this heat's no joke, you know what I mean? Go on, you jacked it in. Well, Sergeant Roll Flint says we'll each take two hours guard through the night. He took the last watch. Next morning we get up and uh, Morse here finds him down under the bridge. We get onto HQ, they send our helicopter, and that's about it. You found him then? That's right, sir. You're right. All the others were still in the tent. I went out to brew up. I couldn't see him, so I went up to the bridge to have a look. The stem was lying there, and when I looked down, there he was. I fetched the others and we brought him up. And that's in here, is it? Yes, sir. You put that bit in. Well, no. Well, Baker was doing it, so I thought that... I see. But we agreed to it, though. He read it out and we agreed it. Russell? Sergeant? You took the last watch before Sergeant Ralph, then? Yeah. And he relieved you at what? Four o'clock, we did two hours each. So you're the last one to see him alive? Did you notice anything? Notice anything. Unusual. Should I have? You tell me. Look, just because a bloke falls off a bridge doesn't mean to say there has to be anything unusual. No. I mean, you'd be walking down the street, one way, then be under a bus without... Fair enough. Away. Just a thought. I mean, it's like Baker said, there was only a low parapet on that bridge. You must have tripped over in the dark. You said that, did you, Baker? Yeah, well, I mean... You seem to do all the thinking. Well, that's the way it must have been, wasn't it? Must have. Well, I should have thought it was obvious. Oh, well, he fell off a bridge, right enough. I can't think of another reason. Can you? All right, I want a statement from each of you, regardless of this. Excuse me, Sergeant. Message from HQ. The Major says I'm to take you over there straight away. What for? One of the doctors wants to see you. Something about Sergeant Rolfe. All right, oh, that's that, then. Hey, do you know who's taking over from Jacko? That's Scotch Kit. Oh, blimey. Jack, I would appreciate it. Shut up. Well, well. Leave me alone, eh? You tell me to shut up. Leave me alone. Nobody tells me to shut up. Get out of it, Baker. Eh? What are you going to do about it, eh? What are you going to do about it? Upset, I am. I just want to get You're by, that's all. Jacko. Will you get out of my way? Hey, when I'm ready. Leave me alone. I've had enough. I've had enough. Well, why don't you do something about it, then, eh? Now, why don't you do something? <laughs> you go on and on, don't you? Why couldn't you leave me alone? Why does it always have to turn out like this, eh? Obviously fell face down. Well, look here, you can see all the damages to the front of the face and the body. What worried me was this bruise here on the back of the neck. You don't think it happened when he fell? No, no. Well, can you be sure? I mean, the body... No, there's more to it than that, I'm afraid. Look at the shape of the bruise, these two lines here. I'd say he'd been bashed with the butt end of a rifle. Well, next thing we know, George comes rushing back and tells us what happened. I wasn't sure at first whether he was dead, but when we got down there... Well, it was a long drop. He didn't have much of a chance. Must have been a shock. Oh, it's fair to me over. Still, I bet there are one or two who wouldn't have minded seeing Sergeant Roth fall off that bridge. I wouldn't say that. Well, it wasn't exactly popular. Oh, well, that's another thing, though, isn't it? He banged you on a chart a couple of weeks ago, didn't he? Four days, Jankos. What's that? Uh, three times in two months. Oh, well, it was my own fault, in a way. I'm a bit too mob happy, see? Long to go? Thirty-four days. Please. Delirious. All right, Evans, thanks. Send in Russell, Corporal. Okay, Sit down. Just a few more questions. Can I smoke? Sure.
Nothing. Hard to believe, really. No, falling off a bridge, hard to believe. Oh, that happens, doesn't it? What, something like Ralph? Dark. He took a watch from you at, uh, what, uh, four o'clock? He was found at six, must have been coming up light just after four o'clock. They could have tripped. He must have. When he didn't call out. Call out? When he fell, you would have thought he would have called out. Well, he probably did, but you didn't hear him. No. We were asleep. Well, all of you? Yeah. How do you know? How do I know? Because it was there. But you were asleep, though. How do you know the others were? Well, there must have been. Why? Well, because if they hadn't been, they would have heard, heard him cry out. Yeah. And gone to find out what was up. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, of course. Yes. You've been in this mob long, Russell? Eighteen months. You like it? No. What made you join up? I worked in a factory with a trade which I wanted to keep. I also wanted to travel around and see what went on apart from what I read in the paper, so I joined the army. Mm, Travelling and you've got your trade? Yeah, I also found out what the army's all about. And you don't like it? I don't like what it stands for. It's unnecessary. You're wrong. It's very necessary. Only because we make it, sir. All right, tell me what happened that day from the time you left here. I told you. Tell me again. Bebo goes on a bit, doesn't he? That's all he's got to do. You don't think there's anything funny going on, do you? Funny? Yeah, with these questions he keeps asking. Ah, uh, I suppose he's got to. Well, I got the feeling he was trying to catch me out. <laughs> Suspicious, that's your trouble. All the same, you tap is. Well, Donald. Donald said so. Well, what about him? Well, he told us what we should say. Making sure we got it right. He's playing the big I am, you know what he is. Yeah, well, Donald ain't a jackal. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, I don't know. I just think he's funny, that's all. Letter from HQ, Sarge. Just delivered. Oh, thanks. You want to see me, Sergeant? That's right, sit down. Just a few questions. Oh? About you this time. Oh, yeah. You got long to go? Five. What made you join? <laughs> Ten hours of me. Well, come on, you don't sign on for, what, uh, six years without thinking, surely? I know, I fancy that, I suppose. A change? Yes, well. Quite a big change, I'd say. How do you know? Well, you'd be surprised what I can find out. Notting Hill, for instance. Notting Hill? Oh, now you were with that lot. You didn't really become a member, that was asking too much. But if you ran with the rest of them, you could make enough trouble. What are you talking about? Keep Britain white, wasn't that it? A good enough excuse to put the boot in someone. But not on your own, though, as I say. Run with the pack and you feel safer. Yeah, well, spades dirty and up the place, someone had to do something, so I got stuck in. You surprised me. I would have said you were all mouth and trousers. You would have said wrong. What about Sergeant Ralph, then? What about him? Didn't you threaten to put the boot in there? I might have. From what I heard, you made quite a thing of it. Oh, did I? That was all mouth, though. That's right. I'm gay with you and him. I didn't like him. Well, that's all there was to it. Now, you try being stuck out in a dump like this with somebody like him breathing down your neck all the time, never giving you a minute's peace. So you were going to dub him up? I might have. But you had to choose the right time. That's it. That's exactly it. Like the night he was killed? In a way, if Sergeant Roth didn't fall off that bridge, he was pushed. Someone smashed the back of his head in. Oh, it could Why it? not? Because... I'm not saying it was me. You had the chance. No. And you've talked about it often. Well, that's different. Not for you, though, Baker. You get stuck in. You just told me. Corporal, uh, I want this man held. No, it wasn't me, I tell you. Come on, Baker. But you can't say it was me. I just talk. Everybody talks. You can't say it was me. No, no, I can't. I just want to talk to you, that's all. Baker. You think about it. I knew it tonight. I knew he was trying to catch me out. Well, they charged him. Oh, they must have done. 
I suppose. Well, why else are they ordered him? Well, they can't be sure. Well, they must be. Well, they need evidence. They might have it. He might have confessed. Oh, no. No, that makes sense. Well, they wouldn't keep him there for nothing, would they? That uh, stands to reason. Of course it does, stands to reason. It's Baker, Sarge. He's opted. When? Not sure. He bashed the guard and took off in one of the jeeps. Damn. Well, we'll find him easy enough. Trouble is, he's got a stem with him. Don't you? Well, it's nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with you. Listen. I said listen. He's scared out of his life and he's got a gun. You know what that means, don't you, Russell? It means he's liable to panic. And if he uses that stand, God help him because I'll have no alternative. You understand me, don't you, Russell? Why is there never an alternative? Why? If anything happens to him, it'll be our fault. Me, because I made a mistake. I kept Baker inside because I thought whoever killed Rolf would have the guts enough to admit it when it looked like an innocent man was heading for the chop. I was wrong. But you, what about you, Russell? Didn't know this would happen. Then stop it. You wouldn't listen. None of them would listen. I'm listening. Ah, you, you wouldn't understand. You understand, Russell. Unless you tell me the truth, another man is going to die. No. Is that what you want? Another death? Another stupid, useless death? No! Then tell me the truth! Oh, he went on and on like Baker. On and on. They're the same. They're all the same. That's all he knew. To obey orders, to kill, to kill without questioning. Isn't that exactly what you did? No. I tried to make them understand, but they wouldn't listen. No one listens. He found me asleep. I was supposed to be on guard and he found me asleep. He got hold of me by the throat. I couldn't breathe. He was choking me. And all the time, that look on his face and the words coming out like on and on and on and I couldn't take it, so I pulled back and hit him. It wasn't until I saw him lying down there I realized what I'd done. I wanted to tell him, but when George Morse found, found him, I saw a way out. As long as you thought it was next, I could keep my mouth shut. I wouldn't have let Baker take the blame. I was scared. I wanted to tell you, but I was scared. And that's all, is it? Oh. Can you see what he was? Can't you understand what he stood for? And you, what do you stand for, Russell? He killed without thinking. He killed the order. Isn't that what you did? You gave yourself the order to kill. Yeah, I didn't mean to kill him. No. Come on. Baker, what about Baker? He's already given himself up. Come in. And that's the lock, sir. I'll uh, be leaving now, sir. I'd like to thank you for all your help. That Arab died, you know. When? Last night. Brain hemorrhage. It's ironical, really. If Russell hadn't killed Rolf. But Russell was wrong. We need the Sergeant Wolves. Oh, yes, sir. We need them, all right. Mm -hmm.